Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I trim up and square up a quilt that has just been quilted. So I've been working on a baby quilt for a friend, and I finished the top, and got the backing piece together and had my batting all ready and discovered that I have a childhood friend that does long arm quilting. Uh, so I actually called him and said, would you be willing to do this? He did. And I just got the, the quilt back from the long arm quilter yesterday and I'm ready to put the binding on. Before I can put the binding on though, I need to trim off the excess batting and backing. I'm also going to square up my quilt. It's not a step that you have to take as the quilt is, is run through the long arm machine or even if you're quilting at home, uh, the fabric will pull a little bit and sometimes it gets slightly out of true. It's not a step that you have to take, but I want it to be done well and look finished and complete. And so I'm gonna trim it and then I'm gonna square it up. All right, so in order to trim the quilt, we need a cutting board and a sharp rotary cutter. You could do this with scissors, it's not gonna be as precise. Um, and then I need a ruler to help me stay on that nice square line. Um, and so I was working with a smaller ruler. This one is 24 inches, the quilt is 46. So um, it makes it a little more challenging because it was too small. And you can buy specialty rulers, but my husband had this genius idea, which has worked beautifully. And that is he got a drywall T-square from Lowe's, I think, and it works perfectly. So what I do is I put my T-square, well, I put my cutting board down first, very important, don't wanna cut on your dining room table and ruin your perfectly good blade or your dining room table. And so you put your cutting board down and I didn't have, I'm not one of those people that has the big tabletop cutting board. Uh, or cutting mat. So I have two smaller ones. I put them end to end and it gives, it's pretty close, not quite all the way, but it will get a, give me a good long cut. So I have my cutting mat down and then you put your quilt down. First step I'm gonna do is put my T-square down onto my cutting mat and I'm making sure the T part is, is perfectly lined up with the edge of my cutting mat. And then I positioned this T-square, you can see I'm sliding it along the edge of the quilt top. And what this is gonna do, I'm gonna get that first cut that gives me a nice square edge and trims off this part of the batting and backing. And then once I get this side cut, I'll turn it and then I'll be able to square it up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take my safety off of my uh, rotary cutter. And because my quilt extends a little beyond my cutting mat, obviously I'm not gonna start at the very end. So this time I'm gonna start in the middle. Normally you'd start at the end if you could. I am gonna end up trimming off just, you can see right here where that fabric is sticking out. That's part of that fabric that pulled probably in the quilt, in the quilting machine. And I'm gonna press down and get that good first dig down. And I'm lining up my rotary cutter along the edge of my T-square. Now, I'm gonna stop for a second. I've got a hand on my T-square and I've got, I'm holding it still, but I've also got just a little bit of pressure pulling the T-square so that it stays square with the edge of my cutting mat. And that will keep me uh, where I need to be. So you can actually see, I'm gonna pull this away so you can see. So I have cut through the batting and the backing, tiny little bit, tiny little sliver of that quilt top. And I can tell right now that as I go down the row, I'm gonna have a little bit more of that. So I'm trying to keep the quilt underneath still and just a little bit of tension or a lot 
of tension <laughs> on that T-square to make sure that it stays in place and the quilt below. All right, so you can see I got a nice clean cut, missed a little pop there, so I'm gonna get that. And now I have a nice square clean cut. And so what I'm gonna do now actually is fold it back, scoot it over. Uh, I'm not moving my mat. I'm gonna put my T-square right back where it was. So I'm scooting my quilt over so that I have the rest of the quilt on that cutting mat. Look at that backing. Is that not the prettiest fabric? And it looks really, I think it looks really pretty with the front. So it's like complimentary, but not exactly the same. Great thing about this T-square is it's got a more than a quarter inch depth on it. So it will go over the, it'll hold on to the edge of the cutting mat, but also be able to hold up to the quilt that's underneath. All right, so I'm gonna get, I'm actually gonna use my, I'm struggling with this piece that I've cut away already. So I'm gonna use the lines on my cutting mat to kind of line up where I've already cut. So that's right there. There are some people that say don't use your cutting mat lines, only use your ruler lines, but I use my cutting mat lines. I feel like they're, they work together for that purpose. All right, so I've got my quilt relined back up. My T-square's on the edge of my cutting mat. You can tell this is right on that line. And now I'm gonna just finish up this edge starting from down here at the back. There we go. It was a struggle to get there, but there we were. And so I can pull away my T-square. And now you can see that's a nice straight cut all the way across the quilt. And it there will be places where it might not look exactly perfect, but it's because of the batting and the binding, but once I get the binding on, you won't notice. Okay, so I've done my one side and now I've turned my quilt. I don't know if you remember from geometry in high school, if you get one square side, then as you square off the other ones off that first one, if it's really square, if it's really straight, then the other should be straight too. And because I'm using a T-square, it's square and my side is square, so we should, it should work perfectly. So what I have done now, I've turned my quilt. I have um, put the good edge, the nice, clean, tight edge right here on my cutting mat, right on the line. And I could do this one of two ways. I actually can butt that all the way to the end, which I think I will, but sometimes I don't, I don't know. Just kind of is how the mood strikes me. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing the weight of this quilt is pulling, which is one of the great and challenging things about working with fabric because it, it has more weight than it feels like it should. But that's also what makes it feel so good <laughs> on the bed. <laughs> All right, so now I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm using my T-square right along the edge of my cutting mat. I've got my good square edge butted right up against that T-square. And now I'm just ooching it, is that a word, ooching? Scooting it, scooting it up to the edge. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. This time you can see, here's a great example of how the quilt has pulled just slightly. So this time I'm gonna have more of that quilt top that cuts away. So I'm, I'm lining up the edge to the edge of that quilt top. And so in this case, I'm gonna lose, gosh, probably almost a half an inch, but I wanna make sure that I get all that I can of that quilt top. So this is the, this is the lowest point. So I'm putting the lowest point on the edge of my T-square, and then I'm gonna 
do exactly what I just did. You have to press kind of hard to get it started. That batting, it's not very thick, but it's thick underneath the rotary cutter. And I'm actually gonna slide that back just to get that last little bit. And this is when the small rulers work perfectly. If you have, I didn't want to cut right into that metal and ruin my rotary cutter. All right, so same, same thing. I'm gonna line this up on my cutting mat so I can get that last little bit. Boy, there's so much little fine adjustments. <laughs> Just like pull here, push there, pull here. All right. And again, this is when it's great that that T-square has some hide on it. So I can get a nice, nice clean cut with the, even with the quilt folded. All right, and so now I have a nice squared up and trimmed up and I'm just double checking and it's sure enough it's right on that line nice and squared up good straight line on one side good straight line on the other side and now I have a squared up corner and so I'm going to continue that on the other sides until it's all cut off so I've now done two sides to my baby quilt cutting off the backing and trimming and have a couple of tips for you. So if you have two T-squares, which I do, um, P.S., these are not expensive T-squares. I think they were less than $13. You can use them together to get not only a straight edge, but a kind of double square. So you know you're squared up on this corner, and now we're gonna square up on the other corner. And so to do that, what you do is you line up your quilt on the one side with your T-square right on the edge of that nice clean cut that you have. And then you use your second T-square and you put that up against the edge of your first T-square. And then that one slides to where you wanna make your cut. So in this case, it would be on this edge. Now I don't have my cutting mat right here, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and mess up my table, <laughs> but you can do that. And then that way you know for certain that it's square on both corners. Um, alternately, if you, and this works with either one or two T-squares, if you get it lined up and you're feeling a little anxious about cutting into your beautiful quilt that, that you work so hard to put together and quilt, you can get um, Taylor's chalk. And this is the one that I have. I'm going to use the blue so it shows against the pink. Um, I love this because I think it looks like a guitar pick and I'm married to a guitarist. <laughs> or you can use a chalk pencil. This one, this particular one happens to have several different colors. So I've picked a contrasting color so I can see it. And I'm going to line up my quilt right there on the edge with my double T-square. And I'm just gonna take this chalk, go right along the line of the T-square, just like I did with my rotary uh, cutter. And when I lift this off, you can see I have a nice clean line. And then I could actually turn the quilt, put that line on my cutting mat. At that point, it wouldn't matter whether the cutting mat is crooked, whether the quilt is crooked, because I'm just gonna cut on the line. Um, I don't 
necessarily trust myself to cut on a line without a ruler, but you could still do exactly that. You could just turn it, reline it up with your guide and then cut. If you were feeling like you didn't want to cut into your quilt blind. So that's an idea as well. So this is just Taylor's chalk. You can get a pencil that has chalk too. I just like this a lot. Uh, it works really, really well. And it's also a great tool to have for quilting, the actual quilting part. So now I'm ready to put my binding on my quilt. I've got my quilt trimmed up and squared up and I'm going to get out my binding, sew it down with my machine. And then in the evenings when I'm watching TV, I will hand stitch it to the back. This is if you wanted a little taste, this is what it's going to look like. So this will be right along that edge. It'll get sewn down like this and then fold it back over and that will be the edge. And that's really the whole goal is to get it all completely done, beautiful binding after having trimmed it off and squared it so that it's completed and finished. So this is the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. I hope this has been a helpful video for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.